Now that we've set up our map, we're going to style the map layers. Visually, we want the land ownership and the sage grouse habitat to have the most weight. Canada and Mexico are there for reference, but should fall to the background. So we'll make them both light gray. And I'll start with Canada. To start styling this, I'll open up the layer properties. And one quick way to do that is to just double click on the layer. And we're going to go to the style tab. So I'll select the simple fill symbol. And from here I can change the fill and the border style of this style. I'm going to click the drop down for fill and choose color. This gives me a window where I can either use this slider to graphically choose a color, choose a color with this color pyramid, use the color picker to pick a color from my screen, or use the hue, saturation, and value, or red, green, and blue sliders to define a color. I'm going to use the HSV slider. I'm going to enter a 0 for hue, a 0 for saturation, and a 90 for the value. And this will give us a light gray. So I'll click OK. And if I wanted to save this color for use later, I can use the blue arrow, and it'll put this color patch there. I'll click OK and OK. And now Canada has a light gray color. To symbolize Mexico, I can use another trick. I'll right click on Canada and from the context menu, I'll go down to styles and copy style. And I'll right click on Mexico, again go down to styles and paste that style. And I've quickly styled Mexico in the same way as I've done Canada. Using the same workflow, I'll make the state boundaries white. So I'll choose the simple fill. I'll click the drop down for fill. And I'm just going to choose the white color from the standard colors right there and click OK. Now I'll style the land ownership layer. Instead of making the entire layer one color, as I've done for Canada, Mexico, and the United States, I'll assign a unique color to each land managing agency. So how do I know who's managing each parcel? Well, this will be information contained in the attribute table. So first, I need to familiarize myself with the data. So I'm going to right click on the federal land ownership layer and from the context menu, choose Open Attribute Table. Here I can see the things I know about land ownership. I'll expand this so I can see all the columns. And right here we have a column called AGBUR for Agricultural Bureau. And it has the managing agency for each parcel of land. So I know there's a column that I can use to style my data against. I'll close the Attribute Table. And now I'll open the Layer Properties for Land Ownership. Again, by double-clicking, go to the Style tab. So far, I've used the default single symbol renderer, which gives the same style to every single feature in the layer. Now I'm going to use the Categorized renderer. So I'll click the drop-down and choose Categorized. Next, I need to specify which attribute column to use. So I know it's AGBUR. I'll scroll down and select that column. And then I'll click the Classify button. This tells Q just to sort through all the records in the table and identify all the unique values in this column. And now I can assign a specific color to each class. Here by default, the color ramp was set to random colors. So Q just has assigned a random color to each class, but I'm going to want to specify specific colors for each class. Notice that there's a symbol at the top with no values. These are parcels with no values or null values in that AGBUR field. They represent private and state inholdings within federal lands. Since I'm just interested in depicting federal land ownership, I'll delete that symbol class. I can simply select that class and click Delete. Now those parcels will not be included on the map. The first class that I'll work with is the BLM class. I will double click on that class and I get a symbol selector similar to the one we use when we're using the single symbol type. So I'll select the symbol fill and again, I can control my fill and border with this. So for the fill, I'm going to choose color. And I'm going to specify an RGB value for this. I'm going to style each of these land ownership types via the BLM standards manual. They specify an RGB value for each class of land. I'm going to set this to an RGB value of 254, 230. And you can see the color change as I enter these values, 121. So this is a color for BLM land, and I'll click OK. I don't want any border lines on these polygons. With such a complicated thematic polygon layer, they're too visually distracting. So I'm going to choose a border style of no pen. 
This will ignore the black border style. You'll see this patch represents what they'll look like. They'll just be tan polygons with no border. Finally, I'll click OK and Apply. And now the BLM lands have changed to the style I chose. Now I'll style the Bureau of Reclamation lands. That's what the BOR stands for, so I'll double click on that. Choose Simple Fill again. Click the Fill drop down and choose Color. And again, we're using the BLM Standards Manual for this. So the RGB value specified for this class of land is 255, 255, 179. So I'll click OK. And again, I'll use a border style of no pen. Click OK. This workflow will be repeated for the remaining classes. When I'm finished with them all, I'll click OK down here on the Layers Properties and save the land ownership styling. So I've finished styling all the different classes of land ownership and I'll click OK. Now I'll set the background color for the map to represent the Pacific Ocean. This will be done from the Project Project Properties General tab. Here's the selection color and the background color. They can both be changed. I'm going to click the drop down for background color and choose color. And I'll set this as 225 255, 255, which makes a pale blue. I'll click OK and OK. The states are white with a black border and serve to show non-federal land as white, which is great. However, the state boundaries are obscured since state boundaries are below the federal land ownership layer. So I'm going to go again to the browser panel and I'm going to select the western states and add it again to the map. Switch back to my layers panel. You can have multiple copies of layers for cartographic purposes. So here I'm going to drag Western States to the top of the Layers panel. And I'm going to double click and open up the layer properties for it. I'll click Simple Fill. And I'm going to give it a fill of no brush. So that it will just be hollow with the boundaries of the states. And I'm going to knock up the border one level to 0.46 and click OK. Now it'll just be the state outlines above the federal land ownership. The last layer to work with is the sage grouse habitat. I'll give the sage grouse habitat polygons a crosshatch pattern, and this will allow the map reader to see the land ownership beneath the sage grouse habitat. So I'll double click on that layer, and go to the style tab, again click on simple fill. I'm going to choose the fill color, and the RGB value for this will be 170. 0, 255, which is a purple color. I'll click OK. I'll click the drop down for the border and choose its color. The RGB value for this will be 142, 0, 213. Click OK. Now I'm going to, instead of a solid fill, I'm going to click the drop down and choose F diagonal which will give it a purple crosshatch. And again, I will bump up the border width of this to 0.46 and click OK. So now I've got all my layers styled. And just so that I don't lose all this work I've done, I'm going to go up and save my project. It is always good to save early and often, as they say, just so that in case anything untoward happens to your map document, you've saved your work. Now that we're done with the styling of our data, in the final task, you'll learn how to use the Print Composer to craft a well-designed map.